I mentioned that I'd like to highlight aspects of the way in which you can view the film. By all means, enjoy it, but work as well. Now, once again, I asked you yesterday to think about which particular discussion would be most helpful for you, yourself, and your work to be in. So I say that as I now present again in a bit of detail the three approaches. So have those in mind as you watch the film and then at 1.30 when we come back you can make your final choice. So you'll have all that time to absorb and think, yes, I'd like to be in the three groups. Those are the two ones I'd really like and that's the one I'll go to so that you'll be able to make that decision. Right. The first one is the dialogue with the scriptures. My recommendation, I suppose, is for people who are involved in religious education that this may be a useful way to watch ordinary films, ordinary stories, which may or may not be intending to communicate values or be part of values education, but which in fact are very strong because of the writing, because of the direction, because of the performances and the text and texture of the film. And I'm hoping that Phone Booth will fulfill a lot of those conditions. It's a popular Hollywood film by a very popular Hollywood director, Joel Shoemaker, with a person who has since become a very popular star, Colin Farrell and Kiefer Sutherland, especially from the series 24. So it's a popular piece of cinema and that's the point of the exercise. We can all get the religious meanings from the Jesus films and some of the Christ figure films that how do we respond? Now in Lights, Camera, Faith, and there is a visual aid here. This must be the only copy in the Philippines, is it? It's precious. <laughs> Unfortunately, as I look, it's expensive as well. We'll have to do something with the Daughters of St. Paul, won't we, to have these published locally. We'll talk to sister, the sisters again, and we'll have dialogue with Boston, I think. Because I'm not sure that Boston are going to sell too many copies at this price here. So what's the challenge? What can we do locally? Uh, this has a different looking cover from the other Lights, Camera, Faith series, but inside there is the similarity. So this is the Ten Commandments and we have with each of the film, with each of the commandments, three films. One, if you're looking at the book and it eventually gets here, you'll find that for each commandment I've written an introduction and I want to put a positive approach to each commandment because I often find people say Oh, you're having a scripture dialogue on the Ten Commandments. It's so negative. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not steal. You shall not do all of these things. But in a sense, it's be truthful. That's what the commandment is about, isn't it? Be truthful. Be honest. Be just. So that's part of the introduction to try to understand the universal positive implications of the commandment. For the three films, we've got generally one that is maybe able to be looked at by most audiences along the PG, PG lines. Anybody ever see Jim Carrey in Liar, Liar? Yes. So we've, we've got that as the first one. So that's fairly, anybody can watch that one and discuss be honest, do not lie, do not bear false witness. We called the chapter Slips of the Tongue, which happened to him when he didn't want to tell the truth and he was. The second one, which is, I suppose, for more mature audiences, but with not too much difficult material, uh, we have here Veronica Guerin, which is also directed by Joel Shoemaker. That's about the Irish journalist, Catholic journalist, played by Kate Blanchett, who was actually interested in uncovering a lot of the corruption in Ireland, especially the IRA and the drugs. 
and they tortured her and they killed her. That sounds a bit like a Christ figure. And look, that's the way she's presented. And uh, the title, we called it, What is Truth? And that's what she was after. And so we have a controversial one in each section. And Phone Booth is the one. It's actually the first one that I wrote for this book. When I saw Phone Booth, I thought, this is fascinating. I've got the title, Live by the Truth. But for the dialogue, and I hope for all of you as you watch the film, you might keep some of this in mind, but for those of you who want to continue this particular approach, we're suggesting three scripture references for the dialogue between the film and the scriptures. And the first one is from the third chapter of Genesis. Genesis 3, 1 to 7. Now, I'm not sure that everybody immediately says, oh yes, of course, that's what it is, yes, thanks. So some people are looking at me saying, what's Genesis 3, 7? I'm reminded of one of my confreres in our community in Melbourne years ago. He was a very self-confident student and he's a very self-confident priest is the dean of the Theological Institute in Melbourne but he teach, and he teaches scripture and one of our eccentric priests who loved to tease and ask questions of the students said to him one day as he came back from studies in your moral theology and your dogmatic theology about salvation do you <coughs> heavens no I'll still tell the story <laughs> he says do you use Romans 3.20? And this man said, oh yes, we do. And then he said, what is Romans 3.20? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so, Genesis 3.1-7 is actually about Adam and Eve. It's about their wanting to taste the fruit of the tree of knowledge. They're wanting to be more than themselves. They're deceiving themselves. And they eat the fruit and they get knowledge that they are naked in the face of God and they are ashamed. And I think you'll find some of these themes in phone booth about a very self-assured cocky agent who thinks he is just the greatest. And he deceives people and he deceives himself. And he's in a situation in the phone booth where somebody challenges him to be honest and it's a fearful kind of experience especially as the accuser has a gun on him and is a sniper and he doesn't know where he is it's a kind of voice of God but it's more a voice of Satan I suppose and that was the voice in the Garden of Eden temptation as well as challenge it's not an exact parallel I don't mean that I mean, that's easy. Yeah, this means this, this means that. But rather the suggestions. How does the film remind you of these themes of Genesis? How do the themes of Genesis, as we name them, illuminate what is happening in the film? So is that all right for Genesis? The second one is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, and it's 11 to 16. And it's about maturity, going to the fullness of maturity, not whisked this way or that way, 